Yo, what up Game Day Goons Nation? I am back here for part three of my five-part series, previewing the Northwest Division for this upcoming NBA season. For today's episode, I'm going to be going over the Minnesota Timberwolves, so let's get it started. Uh, first off, we'll go over for the over-under on wins. It's 44 and a half. I predict them to uh, win more than 44 games. I think they'll get close to 50 wins this season. Uh, they won 42 games last year. And remember, Cat only played 29 games. Uh, he's fully healthy now. And they also have a guy by the name of Anthony Edwards, Mr. Ant-Man. This guy's going to make a huge jump this year. I think he's going to be making that jump into superstar uh, level, like kind of how SGA did last season. So I do think this team will win more games than last season, at close to 50 wins, like I said. Uh, in terms of their off-season moves, they didn't really do too much. Um, they lost Torian Prince and Jalen Noel. I kind of like Torian Prince. He was a solid 3 and D guy. Um, but they added Troy Brown Jr., Shake Milton, and drafted Leonard Miller. Shake Milton's a solid backup point guard to have. Troy Brown Jr. is not too bad of a 3 and D guy, but it's kind of a downgrade from Torian Prince. Um, but regardless, they have a solid bench. They have a solid starting lineup. Um, in terms of fantasy players, uh, I'll just go position by position. First position, point guard Mike Conley. He's ranked 115 last year. He's got an ADP of 127. Um, decent percentages. Uh, the field goal was 43%, so not too great. But the free throw percentage was 83%, which is great. He had two threes, 12 points, three rebounds, seven assists, one steal, uh, 0.2 blocks, and one and a half turnovers. Um, I think he's going to trend down a little bit. I don't think he's going to be a top 115 player. He'll still be a top 140, 130 player. Um, but he's trending down a bit just due to his age. He's 36 years old now. He's not the guy that he once was. But if you're targeting him in later rounds, a guy that can get you some threes, some assists, a little bit of points, and for, for free throws, that's... That's pretty good. Um, next up is shooting guard, Anthony Edwards, Mr. Ant-Man himself, ranked 16th last season. He's got an ADP of 14.7. Uh, solid percentages, 46% from the field, 76% from free throw. I would like to see the free throws go up a little bit. Uh, close to three threes a game, 25 points, six rebounds, four assists, almost two steals, uh, 0.7 blocks, and three turnovers. Uh, he's going to be a top 15 player. I think he can crack top 10. Uh, if his free throw percentage, uh, increases slightly and I think his points will go up. Um, you saw a guy like SGA, he turned into a 30 point per game score and he finished in the top 10. So I think Ant-Man does have the potential to be a top 10 guy. If the points do go up, uh, I think he's going to have a big year. So I think, uh, we're going to see good things from Anthony Edwards this season. Uh, I like him as a second-round pick in fantasy drafts. Um, next up is small forward Jaden McDaniels. He was ranked 105 last season. He's got an ADP of 113 on Yahoo. Uh, pretty solid percentages, 52% 52, 52 from the field, 74% free throw. Uh, about 1.5 threes a game, 12 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, a steal, and a block a game. Nice. And 1.4 turnovers. Uh, so... Ranked as 105, I think he'll still be a. Honestly, I think he can crap. Uh, sorry, crack the top 100, man. Um, so last year, before D'Lo got traded, D'Lo was the third option uh, on offense. So D'Lo is no longer on this team. Um, they're gonna need a third guy to be the leading scorer on this team. I can see Jaden McDaniels taking that step up. If he can average a bit more points, um. Maybe his free throw percentage goes up a little bit. I can see him cracking the top 100. But regardless, I do like where he is being drafted. Uh, for a guy that can get you two stocks a game, that's solid, man. For especially later rounds in the in the draft, I do like Jaden McDaniels there. Uh, at power forward, Carl uh, Anthony Towns. Cat was ranked 22nd last year. He's got an ADP of 23.6 on Yahoo. Um, solid, solid percentages, man. 50% uh, from the field, 87% from free throw, two threes a game, 21 points, eight rebounds, five assists, 0.7 steals, 0.6 blocks, and three turnovers. Um, I can see him cracking top 20, uh, maybe top 15, potentially. He's not going to be a top 10 guy like he once was back when he was the number one guy on this Minnesota team. Because now Ant-Man is there, and he's more so the number one guy now on the team. 
Um, also, Rudy Gobert is on this team now, which does affect um, his rebounding numbers and his uh, shot blocking numbers. Cat uh, used to average over a block a game, but now this past season he dropped down to 0 0.6. The fact, that, or the reason why, is because he's playing the four now, so he's going to be defending perimeter guys more often. He's going to be spending more time on the perimeter on offense as well. So he's not going to be protecting the rim like he once was, um, and he's not going to be grabbing all those rebounds. It's basically Rudy Gobert that's going to be doing mo most of that. So it, it, it's going to be tough for him to crack the top 15, but I can see him being top 20. Um, next is center Rudy Gobert. He's ranked 67th last season, ADP of 64 and a half. Um, great field goal percentage, 66%. Terrible free throw percentage, 64%. Didn't make any three-pointers. Averaged 13 and 12. One assist. Uh, 0.8 steals. 1.4 blocks. 1.7 turnovers. I don't think he's going to trend up. Uh, he's not going to magically magically become a better free throw shooter this late in his career. Um, he's probably not going to make many threes at all. Um, I think his points and the rebounds will stay around the same. Um, his stocks will probably stay around the same. This isn't the same Rudy Gobert in his Utah Jazz days where he was a top 25 guy. Um, so I, I I don't mind taking him around his ADP, um, but I don't see him cracking a top 50. Um, in terms of sleepers, uh, I got two guys here. First up is Kyle Anderson. He's ranked, uh, he was ranked 139 last season. Uh, he's got an ADP of 145 on Yahoo. Uh, good efficiency, 51% from the field, 74% free throw. Uh, just a little over half a three a game, uh, nine points, five rebounds, five assists, two stocks per game, one steal, one block. So he's a good six man on uh, in the league here or in the NBA here. Uh, he can impact in many different ways, points, rebounds, assists. From time to time, he can hit the three ball. He's giving you the stocks. So if he gets the decent, if he gets decent amount of minutes, um, he's a nice guy to target later in your draft. Um, and the next guy I got is Nas Reed, backup big man. He was ranked 192 last year. He's got an ADP of 141. Uh, good free field goal percentage, 54%. Free throw percentage, 68. It's okay. Uh, just one three-pointer game. Not too bad. 12 points, five rebounds, one assist. Uh, 0.6 steals, 0.8 blocks, 1.4 turnovers. He had some big games uh, at times when he filled in as a starter. Uh, so like I said, stretch big, who can shoot some threes, get you some points, rebounds, and some stocks. Um, you can roster him in deeper leagues, 12 teams or larger. Uh, if you want to take a stab at him and, 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 and draft him with your last pick, um, don't hate that at all. Uh, I think he'll be a top 150 player. So, uh, pretty solid option there to have as a sleeper. My outlook on this team, um, I think they'll make the playoffs. They're playoff contenders, I think. Last year, they finished as the eighth seed. Uh, they beat OKC to take the eighth seed after the play-in tournament. Um, but they did lose to the Nuggets in the first round. They lost 4-1 to in that series. Um, they're not championship contenders yet. Uh, they're still about a first or second round team at best. Um, Cat is fully healthy, like I said. Ant-Man is rising into a superstar level there. Um the only way this team can become championship contenders if they acquire a third star. That's when they can make some really big noise in the West. However, the only problem is this. Rudy Gobert is 31 years old and he's declining and he's got a horrible contract. He's making $41 million this year, $43 million next year, and a player option for $46 million in 2025, which he's obviously going to pick up. So trading Rudy Gobert is going to be extremely difficult. I don't think they're going to be able to get a third star by moving him. However, Mike Connolly has an expiring contract of $24 million. And Kyle Anderson has an expiring contract of $9 million. So that's combining $33 million in expiring contracts. They can also offer some draft picks. Obviously, they, they spent a whole lot of draft picks to get Rudy Gobert. So they only have three first round picks uh, until 2030. They have their 2024, 2028, 2030. So if they can combine these first round picks and the expiring contracts and potentially target a third star, maybe a James Harden, maybe a DeMar DeRozan, maybe a Jeremy Grant, 
Um, I think there will be buyers at the deadline. So if they can target someone like one of those guys there, uh, they can make some noise in the West. Uh, but for now, I have them as a playoff team. Um, and yeah, I think they should win more than what they are projected to win. Um, and that's with that being said, uh, that's it for this show. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and also ring that notification bell. Uh, also follow us at our other platforms, Game Day Goons TV, uh, dot TV at Game Day Goons dot TV on Instagram and at Game Day Goons on TikTok. Uh, thank you, Game Day Goons Nation. Uh, thanks for tuning in for today. Uh, we are out. Peace.